Hey everyone, I'm back, Crystal, with Crystal Clear College Planning, and um, in one of my previous videos, we were talking about your portfolio for the sake of admissions into BFA programs and those levels of importance that the interviewing and the audition and the personal statement around how who you are as an artist is all very important, as well as the deadlines, of course, and meeting all of those requirements. But I this is also, I think, all, more for parents or like students as well that are considering a creative field but we tend to hear this thing in society like that creatives don't make money um, and then the where that is coming from and I think understanding this in a way that um, kind of sheds a little bit more light on it so uh, the session that I attended when I was at conference uh, the head of UCLA's uh, Bachelor's of Fine Arts program was the one that was sharing this information. And so really top school in the country with a really awesome program and, and really the data and statistics behind some of why you don't see, you know, like artists often are what they call poly occupational. So it's not like you're a banker or you're in business and this is your salary and everything's easily reported and in, in these cute little boxes, right? Like that's not the world of a creative. So when you think about it um, and you do the, okay, I'm a freelance photographer. I make $50,000 a year doing that. I do marketing as well. I make $80,000 a year doing that. And I'm a studio manager and I make 40K a year doing that. So there's three different jobs that a creative may have and that total income could be $170,000 a year. That's nothing to put your nose up at, right? But each of those in terms of like the reporting, uh, if you think of them independently, it's like, oh, well, you only made $40,000 a year or creatives just don't make money because as a photographer, I only make 50. But the reality is that these people often are going to branch into these different areas and are going to hold multiple positions or that could change as they decide to evolve into other creative areas. Okay. The other thing is also to think about just like as a student, what are we learning when we go off to college? So if you think about a liberal arts program um, or some of these, uh, even the fine arts degrees, the point is that you're learning these skills that um, they had. She shared, what are the top five attributes employers seek on a candidate's resume? Uh, tied for number one was technical skills and communication skills written, and then analytical quantitative skills, strong work ethic and ability to work in a team and problem solving skills. I could say as well, right, like that you're going to get those, um, those attributes in a lot of different ways, which is, is thinking about as a creative, you're working in a team environment, you're learning how to solve problems. You've got a lot of skill set that you are building that's going to take you out into the world in these different areas. So even if you go off and you become a professional dancer for the beginning of your career. It's not like the story ends there just because you were a dance major and then you're taking those skills that you learned and you're applying them to another field that you're interested in. And so you could go off into, um, different categories of a job that don't have anything to do necessarily with with dance as like that major, right? And we know that as well, because there's plenty of people that we meet that they went to school for something and they aren't doing that in terms of a job, but what they did was they gained that skill set, right? So thinking about that perspective. Um, the other thing I'll share the link with you guys that I think is pretty cool is that each state actually does um, a creative economy. So where do those jobs lie? And I'm in Washington state. And so the one that she shared with us was, what What are the top 10 creative jobs right now in Washington? Software developers, post-secondary teachers, photographers, web developers, writers and authors, musicians and singers, marketing managers, graphic designers, fine arts, interpersonal, and translators. So... And they have a total of 43.2 billion in total industry earnings. Like it's a, it's a big part of our, it's 8.7% of Washington state's gross domestic product, right? So it's a fairly significant thing for our state. Maybe it's not like that in every location and that may then, you know, land where it is that you decide to 
get a job or do whatever, you know, entrepreneur um, thing that you want to do, right? But it's something that it, you, you can't just go with, oh, well, you're not going to make money if you go and be an artist, right? You're going to be a starving artist. Well, how else can we look at that and making sure that we're just setting students up for success and understanding what those possibilities could look like for themselves after graduation and those things that they can do to set themselves up just in general um, when they're in school then to, to get that experience, which she also did mention, right? Like don't discount the smaller schools because you often are going to, um, maybe they're not going to be as saturated. So you're going to get more exposure to things and get more of that hands-on and opportunity to work one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so just, you know, just because it's a super competitive, really hard school to get into. Um, I'd like, I have a kid who got into USC's film school this year, right? And that is like, the smallest acceptance rate ever. <laughs> um, and she's super excited and she's thrilled and that's where she's going to go. But it's also, it could be equally as good to have a kid go to Columbia where there isn't um, quite so much competition in order to be able to explore yourself and figure out what that looks like um, and still have that support. So I just wanted to share with you, right, overall it's about being versatile, having those skill sets as a creative and just making sure that you're going to be hireable and have those capabilities post um post college and be able to have that skill set that you're going to be able to sell yourself on so that then you have um you make it for yourself, right? So things just I wanted to share, uh, I thought really great coming from UCLA and their Bachelors of Fine Arts program. And that was the admissions lady who is who was talking about all of these things. So I will be with you guys next time sharing more fun tips on college admissions and financial aid. So follow my channel for more updates to come.